Hello, and we are live here in the Just Be Well um, group and talking about all things functional medicine, all things whole life wellness, and I'm sitting on a bouncy ball today, <laughs> so it's very exciting all the way around. Uh, you know, we've been going around the matrix, and uh, we've come up to, hi Yolanda, hi, Yolanda. we've come up to um, transport. And uh, yesterday I started by saying that detox was probably the most integrated um, uh, no to the functional medicine matrix, but I was wrong. It's actually detox. <laughs> I mean, it's actually uh, transport. Mm -hmm. So transport, what is that about? Transport is about uh, circulation, um, the moving around of anything that um, from your blood to your lymphs to... I also, I have a halo. Do you see that halo? It's the setting sun. <laughs> reflection of a light bulb I think I think the sun is down <laughs> <laughs> oh is it a light bulb yeah okay yeah. I thought it was <laughs> it's dark outside no, it's just my halo um, anyway yeah it's it's the circulation so blood circulation lymph circulation but also intracellular circulation mm -hmm. and it also has to do with how um, like hormones move around so hormones either diffuse locally or they get put into the blood and they go uh, to the whole body um, and same with um, neurotransmitters, you know, neurotransmitters can work just locally, um, like across a synapse, so they just are transported across a synapse, but um, some neurotransmitters actually act more globally. Um, so it's actually a very complicated node, but it really is related to all the other nodes. For transport to work, your heart has to do this, right? Mm -hmm. And what do you need to make that happen? You need energy. Mm -hmm. So the whole mitochondria thing we talked about the other day yeah. needs to be functioning. And if you're going to diffuse a, a hormone out of a cell to another cell, well then the cell membranes better work. So we'll be talking about structure in another couple of uh, days, I guess, but um, the 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 cell membranes have to work right. So that means you need to have the right amount of omega-3 fatty acids to make the cell membranes pliable and all that kind of thing. Um, and if you are toxic, I'm rolling around here, I'm not really trying to, we're playing bumper cars here. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got to eat popcorn, so I'm like. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, if, if you're toxic, then those same cell membranes um, don't work as well because they're bound to those toxins. And um, hi, Kathy, and your hair is beautiful. Hi, Kathy. Thanks, Yolanda. I didn't do anything with my hair today. This is natural dried <laughs> craziness, but thank you. <laughs> so, um, so that's you know, transported. The basic idea is moving stuff around. And how do you move stuff around? Well, everything else has to work really well. You, you have to have digestion absorption to get stuff in, to get the building blocks, to get the um, nutrients. You have to have mitochondria working so that you have that ATP to make everything work. You have to have um, detoxification so that all the receptors aren't being bound up by toxins and all this kind of stuff. And we know how to fix all those things. So we're gonna talk about that quite a bit. Stacy, hi. Hi, Stacy. Um, and, um, so, really, I, I, I kind of start to feel like a broken record. It makes me a little bit crazy, but it's... Right, yeah. I mean, it's complex. It's a complex system, yet it still comes down to those simple, fundamental things. Those five modifiable lifestyle factors. And those important things that go into our diet. The balance of healthy oils and the clean eating. Um, you know, a lot of the symptoms, you can go deeper and deeper and deeper into the complexity, but the answer really is simple, which is nice. I have two friends. Uh, one of them uh, is like a m mega brain laboratory guy, and the other one's a, a mega brain clinical guy, and they were giving lectures together, and the, the Aristo is the mega brain clinic laboratory guy, and he was just going on all of this stuff, you know, and 
Um, at the end, uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Roundtree, who, who uh, is on faculty with me at the Institute for Functional Medicine, he said, wow, that was amazing, wasn't that amazing? But, and complicated, wasn't it complicated? It was really, really hard, wasn't it? He talks like that. And he said, uh, but the, the clinical application is really simple. Fish oil. You know, it's fish oil, it's curcumin, mm -hmm. it's sleep enough, it's all those things. So, you know, um, take a couple of diseases from, from circulation. The, the obvious one, well, something to do with your circulatory system, right? So maybe you have congestive heart failure, maybe you have, um, uh, have had a heart attack or, um, you know, something obvious that, or high blood pressure or a stroke or any of these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Well, fixing that circulatory system is really about all of the stuff that we've been talking about already. It's, um, you know, sleeping, right? Mm -hmm. Sleeping is really important. We've talked about this many, many times, but sleeping is hugely important. Um, a couple of Hi, Stephanie. There. Hi, Teresa. Teresa want to, wants to know what is tonight's topic, and we're talking about transport. Yep. So we had talked about uh, transport being, last night we talked about detox and how interrelated it is mm -hmm. with all the other, and, and I said it's the most interrelated, but actually, as I thought about it today, transport is the most <laughs> interrelated, and I'll probably, it's like my sister when she had horses, we had to go, she had like 17 horses or something at one point, and we'd have to walk through her herd and she'd tell us why each one was her favorite. <laughs> um, and it's sort of the same thing, you know, each node is really intertwined and the more you think about it, the more intertwined they are. Mm -hmm. And so transport goes from everywhere from uh, the blood and lymph circulation, which I think everybody knows about, all the way down to intracellular circulation and then the diffusion out of cells of all of the signaling molecules locally, but then also the ones that are dumped into the circulation that get moved around. So there's lots of different ways in which the body moves things around. There's actually a cell in your spine. I said this last night. There's a cell in your spine uh, that is at the very base of your spine, low back. And a, one little string of it goes all the way down to your big toe. And so that, um, that axon of that nerve cell has to be able to transport stuff from the body of the cell in your spine all the way down your leg. Um, so that's a serious transport job, and we're not talking about transporting it through a blood vessel. We're trying to transporting it right inside that cell in that microscopic little tubule all the way down. And there are actually transport molecules inside the cells called rho protein and others. You remember the actin and myosin of, of it's sort of like a ratchet system that makes your muscles flex. Well, it's all of that kind of stuff that we're talking about. Everything from locomotion of your body to circulation of your um, blood and lymph and everything in between. And we were talking about how, um, you know, there isn't, it's not quite as straightforward as, well, detox, you do something for the liver or, um, you know, GI, you do something for the gut. Circulation is more diffuse. It's everywhere. And um, so what happens in the circula like, circulation node, say that five times fast. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're beginning to talk about um, vascular disease, like cardiovascular disease, heart disease, um, high blood pressure, um, strokes, these kinds of things. And um, the issue becomes really, these are lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. These are first world problems. You don't really see heart disease in the third world. You see trauma and other things, but you don't see heart disease. Um, and so what does that mean? Well, it means you start at the bottom row and you work your way across, starting with sleep. And sleep is critically important to transport. Sleep is when you detoxify. Sleep is when you rebuild. Sleep is when you repair. Sleep is when you clean up. And then moving on into Movement. Well, obviously, if you want to circulate things around, you need to move your your body because if you sit in a chair all day, you get swollen ankles. And I've been sitting in a chair all day, so I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except for a walk I did and a little bit of exercise, I've been sitting most of the day. And sitting is the new smoking, right? So it's important to be thinking about this stuff. And 
setting an hourly chime on your watch and getting out of your chair and just even if it's just walk around your chair one time and sit back down that's way better than not doing that mm -hmm. and I think going back to sleep um, one of the important things you know we do detoxify while we sleep yep. that's when we do a lot of our detoxification but if we eat especially a large amount before we go to bed you're spending that time when you're supposed to be detoxifying digesting your food so that's why it's really important um, among other reasons but for detoxification and um, transport just to make sure you're not eating a couple hours before bedtime Right, because you're you're spending that energy, all that ATP, mm -hmm. you're spending that on, on digesting and absorbing and transporting food instead of on repair and detoxification. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, the timing of these things is kind of important, absolutely. So I'd really like to get to some questions. Well, actually, we might have one yeah. right here. Teresa, any ideas for someone who sometimes can't fall asleep and then wakes up over and over during the night. Yeah, got a lot of suggestions. I'm on a, one of those uh, bouncy balls, by the way, so, and I'm trying to keep my balance. It's one of those things where it, it, it's a core workout while you're just sitting still. Um, so, well, why don't you start? Um, first of all, I mean, you could just simply look at what you're doing before bed. So, you know, are you putting down the screens a couple hours before bedtime? Are you making sure you don't eat a couple hours before bedtime? Because again, that will wake you up during the night, um, especially if you eat certain foods, drink alcohol. Um, alcohol, you know, you feel like you fall asleep quicker, but your sleep is so much poorer and you happen to wake up, you know, wake up more during the night. So really just, what are you doing before bed in those few hours? And, um, you know, what are you doing all day? What are you doing during the day to kind of take those moments for just relaxation and recentering yourself instead of are you on high all day long, run, 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 go, go, go? Um, or are you taking the moments to relax the shoulders, relax your facial muscles, and kind of reset yourself? So I think a couple of things, and I, that's great. I completely agree with that. I, I think uh, d do a, a retrospect or a diary. You sit down with a pencil and paper. What time did you go to bed? What time did you fall asleep? How many, did you get, were you awake during the night? How many times? For how long? What time did you wake up in the morning? What time did you get out of bed? What time of the day did you feel your best? What time of the day did you feel your worst? And then once you sort of identify those time frames, start thinking about what's going on at those time frames. Mm -hmm. I say this a lot, but most of us start with a neck and we end the day with no neck, right? Because we're all stressed out. And so I like to say that a good night's sleep starts shortly after you wake up. Mm -hmm. Because you need to start managing your stress level at that moment. You know, we're not going to get rid of stress, but stress is about what can we control and what do we need to let go of and unfortunately we're holding on to a lot of stuff that we really can't control mm -hmm. and so that tends to bring us into a whole bunch of angst and anxiety that grows throughout the day and then by the time it's time for bed we're so keyed up that well you know we're being chased by saber to tigers what person in their right mind is going to lay down and close their eyes when they're being chased by saber-toothed tigers? Mm -hmm. It makes no sense at all. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the bottom line. So, you know, that's sort of the beginning of it. That's the, the sleep hygiene. And then we have a whole, um, I think I posted a couple, but I'll find it and post it on this again. I posted um, uh, a whole sleep hygiene thing. And then you need stress management. Yeah, um, stress management, really important. Um, and we'll talk about, I'll talk about that right after I finish the sleep thing. And then there's some supplements. Um, mm -hmm. what's, what do you think is a, mag, a fairly magic pill for sleep for many people? Um, you know, it depends how 
aggressive you want to go. I think melatonin is a great one for people. I prefer like L-theanine and 5-HTP together just because mm -hmm. it's more of, it relaxes me enough that I can naturally fall asleep better. And you can mix those also with melatonin, but. Um, yeah. I agree. Um, I think uh, melatonin, anywhere from um, uh, a very sensitive person might take a half a milligram. Somebody who's insensitive might take as much as three or even as high as 10 milligrams. Those higher doses though, they give you a technicolor dream. So <laughs> if you start having really crazy dreams, uh, that's the melatonin. Mm -hmm. um, the 5-HTP uh, helps make serotonin and it tends to put people to sleep. 5-hydroxytryptophan uh, is, is the name a of it. A longer name for it, yeah. Yeah, that's 5-HTP. And then L-theanine just kind of is, has been described as, mel uh, as meditation in a bottle. Mm -hmm. So, you know, take a bottle a day or so. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, like 200 milligrams. Uh, if you're somebody who progressively gets more stressed throughout the day, take 200 milligrams in the morning, mm -hmm. take 200 milligrams uh, in midday, take 200 milligrams at uh, dinner time, take 200 milligrams at bedtime. You know, so you could take four of them a day. You could even take two of them four of a day. They're, they're very safe, but don't start with two four times right. a day. Because if you're the sensitive one, you might be asleep for three days. <laughs> you know, it's like, People talk about taking a Benadryl at bedtime. Mm -hmm. If I take a Benadryl, I'm sleeping for two days. I, there, I'm not waking up. Um, so that's important. Yeah, and L-theanine is great for stress management oh. as well. Yep, it is. So, journaling, yep. Journaling, mm -hmm. Yolanda is suggesting journaling is a great way to um, get a good look at your day and your habits and so on. I really agree. Yeah. Um, and then you have a 22-year-old athletic son diagnosed with degenerative disc disease that's terrible um any suggestions to where he should start mm. uh, taking care of his horrible pain yes wow that's really unusual um is it traumatic uh, he you know did he injure himself but so um adequate vitamin d uh the vast majority of people are deficient in vitamin d he should actually get it measured it should be above 50. um doesn't need to be above 80 but above 50. Um, so that range, 50 to 80, is a good, good zone. Um, vitamin K, um, 40 uh, micrograms of um, MK7. That's the specific kind of vitamin K, vitamin K, MK7, 40 micrograms. Um, and then uh, because it's degenerative disc disease, is that what you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, chondritin sulfate and glucosamine. So chondritin sulfate... And glucosamine probably in the vicinity of uh, um, shooting for about a thousand milligrams of each a day that those would be you know kind of general recommendations should probably be seeing somebody because you probably need some physical medicine from a chiropractor uh, or physical therapy in addition and then um, there's a guy by the name of John Kabat-Zinn who wrote a book entitled um, um, full catastrophe living and it's about meditation he runs a pain management program where he gets the worst of the worst he gets the people who have failed all of the interventional programs where they inject you and kill your nerves and do surgery and all that stuff and he has a better success rate with a meditation program than the places that do the injections and all that stuff so Take a look at that book, uh, John Cabot Zinn. Uh, he has another one called Wherever You Go, There You Are, but that, that's a great book too. But um, Full Catastrophe Living is the one I'm thinking of. Uh, it's a really good book. He has tapes you can get that help you with the meditation program. Um, but especially starting at that young, young age, he needs a lifelong practice to help him with his pain management. That's just awful. I'm sorry to hear that. Stress management was brought up. Um, where do we find, where do you find them? What's them? Um, if you're talking about like the L-theanine that we were talking oh. about for stress management, you can really find that anywhere. You can find that at your Walgreens, your Walmart will probably have it, um, your grocery store. I know they carry it at Cashwise. Um, I like the Now brand. So. Yep. Um, Teresa, I take melatonin, but I seem to fall asleep and then wake up. Yeah, because it doesn't help you stay asleep, unfortunately, and right. not get back to sleep and then dream a lot. <laughs> yeah. 
So you might want to add some of the things that we talked about, 5-HTP or the uh, L-theanine, uh, and I think that could be helpful. Plus, work on that high, uh, the sleep hygiene stuff. I think that's really mm -hmm. important. Um, the stress management, what can you do? Uh, a lot of things. Meditation is hugely important. I would like to offer our, um, if you're not a member of our closed group called um, the Just Be Well Family Room, if you request to join that, Just Be Well Family Room, in there you can download, there's links to download, um, um, what was I thinking about? <laughs> I forgot. Uh, we're talking about stress management. Mm -hmm. And there's something in there, there's a bunch of stuff in there to download. And I can't remember what I was going to say. But uh, stress management. So, <laughs> that's a lot. It only usually, happens I, like, usually I can like pick out what you're going to say, but this time it's, it's actually, gone, huh? it left me too. So, I don't know. I don't remember either. We can always paste it in the comments. Yeah, really. but, so other general comments. Oh, I know what it was. It was our morning routine. Our oh, morning okay. routine. So, our morning ritual. It's a journaling exercise. So if you only have a, you know, a minute, you can just think about it. If you have six minutes, you can spend a minute on each of these topics. If you've you know, got a day, do an hour on each of these six topics. So, um, I don't know, what's the first one? First one is what is my essence? And what does that mean? Essence, so you can look it up in the dictionary, but it's kind of like your core, your core mm -hmm. sense of being. Who am being. I? Who yeah. am I? Yep. Yeah. And, you know, that can change day to day, just depending on, you know, these things you just kind of, you like you actually ask yourself, so what is my essence today? And it's kind of amazing the things that bubble up to the surface when you ask the questions. Yeah. So what is my essence? And maybe just spend a minute and, and, and journal on that or, or think mm -hmm. about it. Uh, and then um, what is my offering? What is my offering? In other words, what do I have to contribute? Now, this can be, you know, just for today, or it could be my goal in life in general. So, and it can be very broad. You know, we think about it in terms of all of the definitions and all of the synonyms. So it's a very broad, just way to start thinking about the day. And then we uh, do what? After what is my offering, it's just kind of a... You know, it seems like once you ask yourself those first two questions, you have more to write. So it's just like a free writing. Um, and then after just, just kind of allowing whatever is subconscious to well up mm -hmm. so just sort whatever of a free association or, or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. yep. and then um, how do I apprehend joy how do I apprehend joy what why do we choose this weird word because um, most people don't use that word and we we're trying to get you to stop and think mm -hmm. and look it up and look at the synonyms and you know, apprehend can be everything from arrest, right, to seize. understand, seize. Um, so how do I understand joy? How do I apprehend joy? How do I, you know, comprehend joy? It's all the same idea. And then uh, second to lastly, pent ultimate, is how will I manifest love? Mm -hmm. How will I manifest love? So how will I manifest love today? Or how do I manifest love in general in my world? And then lastly, we try to then hold three things in deep gratitude and write about those three things. So, you know, you, you start out with just wondering, who am I? Um, what is my gift to, to present to the world? Then allow that to percolate by doing some, just some free association writing, some stream of consciousness writing. And then asking, how am I going to apprehend joy today? Where is it going to be? And, you know, my bias is joy wells from us, right? So mm -hmm. joy is there. We just have to be open to its presence. And then how will I manifest love? And then lastly, what do I hold in great gratitude? And, you know, if you start your day with that exercise, even if you just, you know, put it on a postcard and put it on your fridge and read it, if that's all you did... It will change your perspective on life. But if you take one minute per, ec per thing, just a six-minute exercise in the morning, it will profoundly change your outlook. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful. Right, because so, they're all positive things. Right. You know, we're not asking for specific positive affirmations, but...
positive things, so. And then throughout the day, set your clock to an hourly chime and, and roll your shoulders, roll your neck, you know, shake it out, be, just take that moment to be conscious of your stress. And then your middle of the forehead thing, I love that. Just describe that for us. <laughs> well, when I'm getting stress, um, I naturally like, you know, push, burrow my eyebrows together and I get those 11s that you call them. So I like to massage between my eyes. Not only does it help the 11s vanish, <laughs> but it actually relaxes my entire body. It's one of those pressure points in your body that um, naturally reduces anxiety and stress. So they're, they're actually it feels great. <laughs> the, the, the muscles of the face are controlled by cranial nerves. So that means they're nerves that come straight from your brain, right? There have been studies done by injecting the muscles that make you frown and, and paralyzing them with Botox. So you have sort of a Botox-induced perma-smile. That worked better than antidepressants for people with depression mm -hmm. in, in some studies. Um, so there seems to be this two-way connection. And if you're doing this and you just sort of massage that out, that's a two-way connection too. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that. I think it's brilliant and it, and it works really well. So there's a few some things. Some days I'm rubbing my forehead a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually when we're together. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and then, uh, you know, you could do the, the morning ritual. You could do that in the evening, too, to kind of mm -hmm. set the tone for the evening. The other thing that I really love that I, I'd encourage every couple to do, uh, maybe less and maybe more important, actually, during this COVID, but um, you come home from work and you got to dust off the day. And here's how you do it. You embrace in a hug and you hold the hug and make a conscious um, statement to each other that the day is over and the evening is beginning. And what that does is it just sets a, it sets a, a demarcation and it sets a tone. So I'd like you to think about doing that as well. And now you're going to have to have a conversation with your partner because they're going to wonder what the hell's going on, but, but it's a very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. So think about that. Uh, Susie, hi, all the way from the east. And what's Selena saying? I know that my tryptophan and melatonin don't work well without L-theanine. Yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of people find that because, yeah, you need to... Uh, Ellen from Canada! I think there was one... Fran from California? Teresa, can you repeat what that was? 200 milligrams of, I think, uh, L 200 milligrams is L-theanine. Yeah. And I can, um, I'll go back and put it under your comment to Teresa later. There you go. Um, Christina, no known injury. Wow. So, yeah, just the unlucky one. So, Ooh, there's an app that goes with full catastrophe living. Oh, is there? I didn't know that. Thank I you for that. Yeah, yeah um, that's awesome. I assume it's some kind of a meditation reminder app. or uh, In the hospital where John Kabat-Zinn works, there's a channel where every day he meditates and he just is just his face and he's just mm -hmm. meditating. <laughs> so it's just him staring at you. Um, but it actually it helps, uh, you know, to be feeling like there's a connection because mm -hmm. Zen meditation is I open meditation, which is a little different for a lot of people, but that's what he practices. Um, all right, let's see. Vitacost is a good source for supplements, yep. And then uh, Colleen. Huh. Colleen said, glad I'm not the only person to forget what they are talking about in the middle of talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I do that all the time. Yeah, well. It any comes, vitamin to help it's, with it's that. Caused, it's caused by gray hairs. Um, <laughs> any vitamin. Well, there are some, actually. Oh, we, have a whole, um, and... we have a whole section on um, memory on our mm -hmm. website. So there are a bunch of supplements. And fish oil, you know, it, it starts, right, the five modifiable lifestyle factors. Then probably the, our foundation, which is a multivitamin pack with some phytonutrients and then mm -hmm. some fish oil. And then there are some, some specific things that are for... Uh, uh, dealing with memory issues as well. Yusuf is in the house! 
Yusuf is a buddy of mine from the Institute for Functional Medicine. Thank you so much for being here. Teresa, question. Maybe off point, but I have been considering starting a 30-day program using Arbonne. What are your thoughts and also... What Arbonne, are you... is that airborne? What's Arbonne? I don't even know. I'm not sure what Arbonne is. I've heard of it, but I honestly... What are don't... your thoughts on also... Stivia. Stivia. Oh, okay. Um, okay, well, 30-day programs. First of all, 10-day detox, 30-day detoxes. A 10-day detox is 355 days too short. That would make a 30-day detox uh, 335 days too short, I guess. Um, so these programs, I'm not a big fan of programs. I'm a big fan of get it right every day or get it nearly right every day. Right, if you need a program, there's a, there's a good chance you just need to you know, alter some things in your thing, your habits that you do day to day. So your mm -hmm. lifestyle choices that you're making today. A 30 day program might get you great, feeling great after 30 days, but then after that time period, everything is going to build up again. So you really need to rebalance your life. Yeah, so it goes back to looking at those modifiable lifestyle factors. It goes back to really considering each one and just taking them one at a time. Um, and moving through them because mm -hmm. you know we're being toxified every day so we need to be present with our detoxification mm -hmm. every day um, right and, and it's overwhelming and to do you know you think of all the five modifiable lifestyle factors it's overwhelming to think of all the areas that you need to um, you know fix in your life so you know start with the one that affects you the most and those just kind of like the interconnected web are um, connected to other things. So uh, as you concentrate on the one that's the worst, the other ones will also start to improve. The other thing is don't focus on the short term. Mm -hmm. Don't stand on a scale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, don't worry about that stuff. It, replace yeah. your scale with kindness to yourself. <laughs> um, you know, let's just assume let's let's just pretend like I'm a hundred pounds overweight and I'm feeling terrible about that and I got to go on a diet and fix everything right now I bet that was loud when I punched my fingers right next to my mic <laughs> um, you know uh, let go of that stuff mm -hmm. it just that's not the important thing the important thing is treat yourself with kindness mm -hmm. how do you feel you want to feel great so yeah. You know, nourish yourself with foods that make you feel great. And as you do that, your skin will start to radiate and you'll naturally become the size that, oh, I think we've got a cart boat behind oh, us. Oh yeah, this is awesome. It's, the, it's, it's not it's, a UFO. It's not a UFO, it's a cart boat. We're in Minnesota and they it's a boat with zillions of lights. It looks like uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kinds, but they're on a deck and they're... So that's our ADD kicking yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> Something shiny. Something shiny. But yeah. Yeah. Um, Elevens, yeah. Elevens, yeah. yeah. Let's see. What other fun things do we have to talk about? Yeah, there's one. You got to use your... Ooh, Selena. It has all of his stuff that was on tapes or CDs. I bought the first one with the first half of the programs. There is a second app too. John Cabot's in. Oh, you're talking... Yeah. yeah, the app. Awesome. Cool. Um, Teresa, let me correct that. It is a cleanse, I believe. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So whatever, a cleanse, uh, same idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, cleanses, and people like jump starts, right? So yeah. it's a great jump start mm -hmm. if you want to do a jump start. Um, I just am to saying. To get you motivated and feeling great. And, yep. But. but at the bottom of it, you need to keep going. So, you know, having this diet, doing this great cleanse, and then coming back to this diet mm -hmm. is just going to keep you right here. You got to yeah. do this cleanse, and maybe that's a hyper intensive cleanse. So you got to come back to a diet that's somewhat better than where you started, mm -hmm. or not just diet, lifestyle. Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tig, how you doing, Eric? Eric. How you doing, Yolanda? Oh. What are we talking about? Airborne is a 30-day cleanse detox program, but I agree with Tom and Elizabeth. It's about a lifestyle change. Is that by the same Airborne little tablets that you buy for... It, it's spelled different, so I oh, bet it's it? not. Well, I can't spell my own name. So, <laughs> oh, so sorry. Um, lifestyle change being good to yourself through good sleep, good food, joyous movement, and love. Yes, Absolutely. Yolanda. 
Selena Reed. And I'm really stuck up or I have bifocals, one of the two. <laughs> oh, Michelle, have some great tips on fibromyalgia. Do I have some great tips? Yeah, they're exactly what we've been talking about. Fibromyalgia <laughs> uh, is a bit of a master's class in functional medicine. It's, it's uh, difficult because it is multifactorial. Fibromyalgia has components from the gut issue. Almost everyone with fibromyalgia has a dysbiosis, which means an imbalance in the gut. So go to YouTube and look for our videos on 5R. Mm -hmm. um, they, they also have very frequently have issues with detoxification. They very frequently have issues with uh, energy production. Uh, they very frequently have issues because they feel so crappy so much of the time. They have a lot of issues with those five basic modifiable lifestyle factors. And a big issue is sleep. Sleep is huge. Uh, if I was going to start with one thing, it would be focusing on sleep and figuring out how to get all the hygiene aspects of sleep right, get and some supplements management. going for sleep, stress management piece, all really, really critical for people. There's um. There's a book uh, by Tettelbaum, I think is his name, Tettelbaum, mm -hmm. called From Fatigue to Fantastic. I don't agree with every sentence in the book, but I think it's a good book, and uh, I would, I would uh, recommend you take a look for that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then Stacy's watching. Hello, Stacy. Hi. So have we uh, chewed up enough of their evening at this point? Yeah. 37 minutes. <laughs> so... Does anyone have it, any as more long questions? as there are questions yeah. uh, coming, we're happy to stay. I just don't want to, you know, mm -hmm. drone on until everybody's unconscious. That's no fun for anybody <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. So um, transport. Uh, mm -hmm. Transport's a little hard to put your finger on. Uh, has to do with just moving stuff around the body. Mm -hmm. I like to say it's the natural supply chain, right? And um, I think the human body is probably the original just-in-time supply chain. And the problem with that is, is if anything gets interrupted, we have downstream problems. And a lot of um, disease is really managing localized supply chain problems. Um, you know, like for as an example, our... Um, uh, one of the tests I like to do uh, is some kind of organic acid test. Um, and it tells us not about the deficiencies somebody has with nutrition, but the efficiencies that they have. How efficient or how inefficient are you at metabolizing or utilizing this vitamin or that vitamin or the other vitamin? And they all have to do with a complex array of things ranging from your genes and genetic uh, SNPs are called single nucleotide polymorphisms or copy number variants that are all kinds of technical terms, um, all the way down to toxins and things that interfere with your metabolism. So, um, you know, trying to figure out that localized supply chain interruption, that's what the transport node is all about. And what are you reading there? Um, I was reading, Yolanda had a question. Um, and so did Rebecca. Yolanda, I'm struggling with the stay-at-home order and missing my regular chiropractor and massage therapies to help with my autoimmune problems and pain. Any suggestions? Yeah, uh, it's right over here. I'm going to go run and get it. <laughs> um, well, first of all, that ball I was sitting on. And... So the ball he was sitting on is one of these. Yep. Oh, and he's got his... And then I have this, mm -hmm. and I don't care. I should have moved the ball. It would be kind of funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'd have to go to the chiropractor. And then I have this, and inside mm -hmm. this, for beginning, is this because it's softer. Mm -hmm. And show her the end of it so she can. That's the. It's gonna be backwards. But... Oh yeah, sorry. So it's called Power Pro. And, well, I don't care about it. It's just a roller, mm -hmm. right? It's just a roller, and you you roll on this. You can put it lengthwise on your spine. You can put it sideways and roll back and forth on it. Um, you can just use this chair thing that I'm on, mm -hmm. and you can lay on it on your stomach. You can lay on it on your back. If you're just starting out, you can just lay flat on the floor. Um, or you can use, uh, you know, any short backed chair and just do gentle hyperextensions. Um, so there's lots of things you can do at home. You can also, on two chairs, you can support yourself 
with the arms of the chairs and uh, allow sort of your body to stretch your spine, um, you know, uh, by supporting yourself from your arms if your shoulders can take that. Um, some people love inversion tables. They work super good for them. So there's a, lots of different things you can do. Mm -hmm. And you probably have something at home that looks like that as well, or roll up a, some towels. Or Any thoughts on Site K? I don't know what Site K is. Um, send me a link and I'll look it up mm -hmm. and I'll get back to you. And hello, jo Joanne. Hi, how Hi, are Joanne. you? Um, oh, and, and Jennifer. And Jennifer. Hi, just in time. We're about to say goodbye. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you for coming. Um, all right. Let's see. So transport, I think we killed it pretty badly. And why is this important? Because uh, a, a, a well-tuned uh, machine of your physiology is what is going to make you the most resilient to all disease, mm -hmm. including COVID-19. Uh, tennis oh thank you yes, yes tennis balls tennis balls are miraculous mm -hmm. um, uh, you know they're just just big enough to get there without being so big that they're hard they're, that they hurt real bad and they're soft and you can put them right on a knot or put them right next to it air like if you got a if you have two um, vertebrae that are bugging you you can put one on either side mm -hmm. And Jennifer's husband is probably going nuts right now because he's a chiropractor and he knows 10,000 times more about this than I do. But, um, you know, tennis ball is really beautiful for helping. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, On your last live, you had given a website to your supplement. Yes. Yep. yep I think we posted a link that was um, specifically to the vitamins. But from there, obviously, you can navigate and find any of the supplements. Yep. Oh, I keep two in a sock. And tennis balls. There you go. Mm -hmm. I won't make any comments about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what else? And Teresa, I believe there I'm was... I'm going to get like a telescope or something. <laughs> I believe there was a four. Can you tell me, should a person take them all? Or is there a combination that you would recommend? Could you elaborate on that, please? I believe there were four. For, for for what? I don't know. Probably four on the um, supplement page, I'm betting. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So there were four supplements. One was um, just a fruit and vegetable powder, which has the antioxidants of 20 servings of fruits and vegetables. And then there was a men's foundation um, supplement, and then a woman, two women's foundations. So... Um, Premenopausal... Yeah. Uh, and not perimenopausal. So there's premenopausal, which means you have no symptoms at all. So that's teenage to, you know, 30s, maybe into the 40s. And then there's perimenopausal and beyond. Mm -hmm. So perimenopausal and beyond is the women's advanced, I believe we call mm -hmm. it, or transition. Yeah. It's it. I'm terrible with it's the It's transition. Transition, yeah. Yep. So if you're perimenopausal to postmenopausal, mm -hmm. it's transition. And if it you're... says right on the outside of the bottle. You'll see it. It says um, postmenopausal on it. Yep. And then premenopausal would be just the women's. If you have a Y chromosome, uh, it would be the men's. And then the fruits and vegetable, that's the foundation. So that, the packet, those are packets. The packet has multivitamin, multimineral, mm -hmm. some phytonutrients, fish some fish oil. And then the, the powder, it, each scoop has the antioxidant and phytonutrient capacity of 20 servings of fruits and vegetables. So it's just an insurance plan. It doesn't replace your fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. Did I mention that? It does not replace. It doesn't fruits. replace it, no. No, it does not. Um, it's just, a nice support, especially if you have a picky teenager that doesn't like to eat his vegetables. <laughs> sneaking into stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so th that's the four, I guess. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the question right, but fortunately, the smarter half is here. Selena. Selena's laughing about something. <laughs> I must have done something stupid. Um, and Teresa is a thumbs up, I All guess. All right, good. Okay. Answer the question then. All right. Anything else? All righty. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. I think um, if I'm remembering after transport must be communication, which is hormones. So mm -hmm. tomorrow we're going to talk about all things hormonal. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry. 
Why? Are you pointing at me? Oh. <laughs> he's, he's lucky mine are pretty balanced. <laughs> I actually had a patient one time who came in and she said, oh, by the way, you know, at the last, you know, after we're already 30 minutes over time and it's, oh, by the way, I just got to talk to you about my husband. He is a complete jerk. It's really about a week a month that guy's a jerk. <laughs> and as she's telling the story, she goes, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> so I don't know which is true. I, you know, I don't know if he might well be a jerk every week for a month. If every it's month that week. week, you better just agree that he's a jerk. <laughs> That's right. If That's we're right. talking to her during the week. Yeah. It's best just to nod. Just say, yep, he is. Yep, I am too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to talk about hormones, but not just sex hormones. We're not going to just talk about. Um, estrogen and progesterone and, and testosterone. We'll talk about thyroid and pituitary mm -hmm. and adrenal and you know everything in between. So we'll just talk generally about hormones uh, tomorrow evening. And uh, Yolanda, let's, let's sleep well and take care of ourselves. Yeah, let our yep. bodies heal and detox properly. Yep. I agree. Absolutely. That's a good way to end. All righty. Right. So we will see you tomorrow night. Same bat. Same bat channel, 8.30 Central. And it was uh, 8.26 when Elizabeth said, what are we going to talk about tonight? And I said, well, are we, we're we supposed to do that? So uh, we almost forgot. I didn't forget. No, I, I reminded oh. you a few times before <laughs> that. Like... I was, I was uh, engaged in yeah. a few things this evening. Yeah. All righty. And the most recent one was the B movie. We were watching the we B movie watching as a family. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so have some family fun too. For the hundredth time this month. Yeah, six year olds <laughs> like to watch things over and over. All right. Alrighty. Good night. Bye.